Hi, my name is John and today I'm going to tell you how to find out if your teacher is good or not. As someone who really believes in the power of education and having been taught by excellent teachers and tutors throughout primary, high school and university, as well as having my fair share of some pretty bad teachers as well, I believe that I have a lot of insight and experience in this topic area. In today's video, I'll be going through why it's important to have a great teacher, the characteristics of a great one, as well as some different ways to tell if your teacher is good or not. Let's get into it. Having a good teacher is important because they can help students learn more effectively and efficiently. Good teachers can help foster a positive learning environment, provide clear instruction, and motivate students to reach their full potential. As someone who attended two separate selective high schools, Penrith High School and Gerwin High School, I was fortunate to have more good teachers who did these things. One in particular was called Mr. Payne, who was my year nine and year 10 English teacher at Penrith High School. He was definitely a phenomenal teacher because before that time, I was always decent or average in English, but I wasn't able to compete with the very best students in my grade. And remember, attending a selective high school means that every student at my school was quite smart. And so even though I was very good at primary school, the standard in selective high school is that much higher. So I was always pretty good, but I was never, you know, top two or top three or something like that in the grade. He allowed me to ask great questions and he was so much clearer in terms of instructions when assigning a task compared to any other teacher that I had before. When I needed clarity on an assessment, all I needed to do was just ask the question and I found that more often than not, my questions were also questions that other students in my class wanted to find out about, but they just did not ask themselves for whatever reason. I also liked Mr. Payne because he was very fair on the marks and I did not ever think that there was a time where I believed I was given an inappropriate mark compared to someone else where it just didn't make sense. A great tutor can also do the same things a great teacher can do, but outside of class in terms of school. My teacher in year 11 and 12 was a girl called Megan. She helped me develop critical thinking skills, problem solving abilities, and self-confidence. Year 11 and 12 is a completely different ball game compared to junior high school or primary school. And she was very clear in telling me what to expect. She increased my standard of English, even though I felt like I was already a lot better than what I was before with the help of Mr. Payne. And it allowed me to polish my technical skill set in English even more to be levels above other students. She was also one of the tutors who was also quite down to earth and had great communication. So if I needed to talk to her in terms of an assessment, I could do that quite easily, but I also had the luxury to talk to her about anything in general as well, which allowed me to really enjoy the class. Having a good teacher and tutor can decide whether you like or hate a subject. If my teacher at school was terrible and I felt like I was treated unfairly and they were very stern in terms of their instructions, I would just dislike the subject. If I had the option, I wouldn't choose it for year 11 and 12 and I would try to avoid it completely. If my tutor was not supportive or did not know what they were actually teaching me, I would feel like it would be a waste of time and obviously I wouldn't continue with them anymore. This leads on to my next point. And I mentioned a few characteristics of a great teacher or a tutor through Mr. Payne and Megan, but let's fire through some specifics that I want you to know about. If they do not have these characteristics or only have a few of them, it may be a sign for you to see whether you can change the situation or do something to rectify it. A good teacher has to be knowledgeable. They have to know the ins and outs of the subject that is being taught and is able to answer your questions competently. It doesn't mean they may know the textbook definition, but if they know the gist of the answer and they know the principles and an optimal way in tackling the question quite effectively, then that is a sign that they have the right knowledge and that they are a good teacher. This can be tricky for parents and students to find out from the very beginning, as it may say take some time for you to really identify and recognize if the teacher knows their content material 
adequately. My personal telltale signs that they are not knowledgeable is if they frequently have to look at the answers to check questions. When I am personally teaching students, I don't even need to look at the answers since I already know the answer. I might want to double check if it is a multiple choice question, but I would not really need to look at the explanation for the majority of questions since I'm already very familiar with the content and the difficulty. Another sign that they may not have good knowledge is if you have a chat to them, they ask a few questions about their process, but they only tell you about the buzzwords. If your child is going to a selective school preparation, they may focus on other things that are unrelated in their response, like writing in general, or which school they attended, like the King's School. It's not really answering your questions very well, and they're just saying and talking about these buzzwords to make it seem like they know what they're talking about. Instead, what you should be looking for is if they answer your question clearly, and they don't fluff around. If they can't give you a straight answer or response, chances are they don't know their content very well. Another sign I recommend parents is to be aware of a teacher's school mark in that subject area. I don't think that having a high ATAR means you'll automatically be a good teacher, but I also think that if you failed English in year 12 or only did two unit maths, it does not make any sense for you to teach extension English or maths or even students that are getting into selective school. So do a bit of a casual probe in terms of the questioning before you take on a tutor, but take it with a grain of salt. No need to delve into the granular specifics and keep asking about their experience or what they know, otherwise it'll feel like an interrogation and your teacher or tutor would not want to even teach you. Because remember, teaching goes both ways. Having a teacher who shows respect is so important when teaching children and I think that is a sign of a great teacher. Academics is one element, but if you have a positive role model in a teacher or a tutor who can indirectly guide your child to respect others and to have good values, I think that's so beneficial. I find that all great teachers show respect in everything they do and it shows in the way they treat others and teach students. This comes back to class expectations and what needs to be done in the actual lesson. If students are afraid to ask questions or if they speak over the teacher constantly or if the teacher is very rude to the student, then that is a sign that they do not have any respect. Recently, I was in an English class teaching one of our students. In the text that we had to read for reading comprehension, an item was very expensive and it could cost $15,000 for an albino animal, which makes sense in the context of that question. I said, wow, that is very expensive for an animal. And the student actually said, no, it's not. 15,000 is not a lot. You are just poor. Immediately afterwards, they said that they were kidding and were sorry. As the teacher that has known the student for many years, I knew that he was a nice and compassionate boy, that it was respectful, but what he said was really mean. And I knew that his words can be hurtful if it was said to anyone else besides myself. So I stopped what we were doing, I stopped answering that reading comprehension, and I literally told him to focus on what I was going to say. I let him know about my thoughts, that it, what he said was not respectful or kind, and it wasn't even funny, even though he said he was joking. He also agreed about that and regretted saying that immediately after. Everyone makes mistakes, but a great teacher or tutor needs to be able to call this out. If behavior like this is done and it's not addressed immediately or on the spot, then that means the teacher is allowing disrespectful behavior to continue and that's not something that I really want. In saying that though, this was the very first time I experienced this with that student, but I thought it was very important for me to let them know that because if they told that to their school teacher or to another tutor, that's completely unacceptable. A good teacher should also be engaging in the way they build rapport and interact with students. If they are not asking questions and just tell students to write down notes the entire class, it won't work. A good balance between asking questions and leading students on is so important. At the end of the year or when you graduate school, it is not the teachers that are super strict, that are memorable or make a difference to you. It is the teachers that are engaging and make class fun. That is why I remember Mr. Payne from Penrith from back in year nine and 10, but I can't even tell you who I had for science that year. 
A good teacher who's engaging makes a lasting impact while a teacher who's not engaging is easily forgettable. So now that we see and went through some traits of a good teacher and tutor, are there any ways we can see if our teacher is actually good? How can we tell? Well, the first way to tell is the way that they teach. Analyze their teaching method and see whether it's a good fit for the student. As mentioned, you can't really do much about your school teacher, but when it comes to a tutor, you can definitely observe their teaching method. At Bing's Academy, although we tailor our content to the student and their specific goal, we do have a few go-to teaching methods and approach that we generally like to follow. If what we follow is not a good match and you don't like a certain aspect of it, then you can ask them to change or tweak their approach. If what you're looking for is completely different, to what the tutor is providing, then it doesn't make sense for you to stay with them. For instance, we always ask our students to answer some questions so then we know what they are thinking before we tell them the answer or our explanation. This is better in terms of our experience for them to understand the question because in our opinion, we don't wanna generally go into answer mode otherwise they're not really going to learn as much compared to if we just ask questions first. But if you are in year 11 or 12, sometimes it is better to have the answer provided to you if you have urgent assessments because you don't have the luxury of developing the basics over time. So you may prefer doing different teaching methods in that instance. Another way to tell if the teacher is good or not is to ask students and to look at reviews. If you have a teacher for the first time in school, perhaps you can ask students from a grade above or another class that has actually had them before. Know what they think is good about that teacher, what is not so good and what is actually bad about them. Perhaps they might be able to share some insights and tips that can help you on your journey with them. If previous students say that this teacher is very strict in terms of homework, then you know for sure that you have to complete your homework on time and at a very high standard. For a tutor outside of school, you can ask a current student or watch some reviews about how a previous student found the experience with that teacher. See whether you like the sound of what you are hearing, otherwise you could find another tutor that has better feedback that aligns with what you are looking for. Finally, the easiest way to know if your teacher is good or not is to actually talk to them. Ask some questions before you start. Try not to pay for an entire year if it comes to tutoring, but then find out after talking or starting a few classes with them if that's really what you're looking for. Try to do some research and if they're not exactly what you're looking for, then do more research. If the teacher showcases the traits of a good teacher that I mentioned earlier, then it might not hurt to start with a few classes and see how that goes. Make sure to monitor the lessons, not with formal assessments necessarily, because it might not make sense if there's an exam every month, but rather if the classes are enjoyable and your child is learning as well. Sometimes it is hard to resolve the situation if your school teacher is not the best. I personally had to endure it and just work through it. However, there is a easier way to see whether you can resolve this, and that is by changing your teacher by escalating it through your school. I say easier way, but it's basically one of the only ways. And letting them know your concerns, which can be very confrontational and way too much work because it does require documented evidence. You can't just change classes because you don't feel like it. You have to be able to demonstrate clearly that they are not a great teacher and not a fit for your child. Collecting this evidence to show that a teacher is not very good can be difficult because unless it is obvious and clear, a bad teacher is subjective and showing evidence is quite difficult because it takes a long period of time to show different instances and situations that demonstrate that. Also, it also requires the students to be in class filming and recording certain aspects and that just takes a lot of time as well. Alternatively, you can just change schools but that is a logistical nightmare and it's also a big reason why many students and parents are opting for selective high schools or certain private schools that are ranked higher academically because the standard of teaching at these schools are just better. So the likelihood of having a bad teacher is going to be slimmer compared to just your local public school, which may not have the best resources provided. 
Sometimes it is just better to work through your school teacher because next year you will likely have a completely different teacher and you might not have them again. It is unfortunate, but we know that in New South Wales specifically, there is a large teacher shortage. So the number of overall teachers in schools are limited and strained. Here at Bing's Academy, I would say we really try our best to be a good teacher. Our format of only doing one-on-one -on -one classes allows us to tailor our lessons depending on what the student is actually aiming for. And we pay attention to only them because it's one-on-one. -on -one. There's no one else in class, so all our effort is towards them. And I think that makes a pretty good difference compared to group classes because of the format of what we do. The average tenure of students with us is pretty long. And since the payments are weekly, students are actually given the option to leave at any point. They do not have to be with us for an entire term if they don't feel like we're the best for them. And I think that transparency and this format has allowed a lot of students to not only want to try to be with us, but also stay with us for a while too. But in conclusion, there are different characteristics of a good teacher, such as if they're knowledgeable, that they embody respect, or if they're engaging. And I go through different ways to see if your teacher or tutor is good by number one, observing them, Number two, asking for reviews or external feedback from past or current students. And number three, just talking to them and seeing whether what they're saying matches with what you're thinking and giving it a go. I also talk about the reality of the situation here in New South Wales in particular with teachers, where if you don't really have a good teacher, you really can't do too much. You kind of have to stay with it or change schools really, which is not the most ideal situation. But in terms of a tutor, there is a lot more flexibility because you can change your tutor. I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you like this style of video or if you wanted me to cover a specific topic, make sure to write it down in the comments below. Like and subscribe as it helps more students like yourself and more parents find out more about this. I'm not paid at all for these videos, but I really hope that you guys find it beneficial. Thank you guys. Bye.